Hey fun fans, before we get to this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been spreading the word of fun to help us stay live, light, and independent through your donations, bits, and subscriptions, and also to the sponsors of this segment, PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Now that we have given you guys some quick bit of tips on this and gone through the history of the award, um, we're gonna go, we're gonna swap gears to a very relevant topic in today's thing, in today's uh, show. Wow. Um, one thing that is very much found inside of history shows is there's a debate on a topic. So currently, we've seen it all over social media. Teams are doing amazing work in helping their communities during the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and it has brought us down all over the world. However, it raises the question, should this impact that these teams are doing and documenting actually be up for consideration for the chairman's award? Now, quick disclaimer, the words and arguments that are placed here are based on our own arguments, research, and viewpoints. So, like, this is all our own words. We're not here representing other people. We're here doing it ourselves. So, chat, you're welcome to join in, get your points into here with us, and we will talk about them, tag at first updates now in the chat for those who are watching here on the live stream. So, yeah, and just, just to clarify what Tyler said, or what, uh, what Brian said, um, the opinions expressed by all of the presenters today are not uh, representative of the opinions of our, our respective teams or former teams or of fun. They're our own opinions and our own only. All right. So. Let's go on ahead and let's start it off. We're going to do this kind of loose. This isn't going to be like a debate like how you've seen presidential debates. We're not going to have a moderator go through. We're going to go through and we're going to have some points brought up. And then we'll go on ahead and we'll talk about them on our platforms here. Um, one thing that is that I've that we've all noticed throughout first is that first has a questionable level of playing field. So here, I see that there is a very large difference in the level of playing field for chairmen versus what we usually see in robotics play. Uh, what do you all think on this topic? So chairmen has always had a weird inbounds on the playing field, but from what I've seen, from the many winners all around the different regionals and districts. It's really how some teams kind of overcome this imbalance of resources and help out their community that show the winner. Like, you don't need to have a very large budget to be able to win. A friend's team in Canada, I know, that they were struggling to survive as a team altogether but going out in their community and really showing that, hey, we care, we want to help you, even though we're slightly struggling inside our stel ourselves. And in then 2018, they won chairman's due to their immense level of dedication in helping the community. Well, well, one thing, oh, well, Brian, go yeah, ahead. Um, yeah, Trevor, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, I think one of the craziest things that Chairman's has consistently shown is teams taking an, un an unbalanced playing field and finding a way to make a difference in their community. And it's been shown across so many different teams. I don't want to keep pulling up like individual examples. You can go read all the winning essays and see it. FRCs always come down to first teams making a positive impact in their community um, across all the different chairman's definitions. It's been about doing good in your community. Um, ideally, you have a first logo on your shirt while you're doing it, but first at its core is about making a difference and making the next generation of problem solvers. And so I think COVID 19's created a situation where we have a bunch of brilliant people dealing with a massive epidemic and they're trying their best to be those problem solvers and tackle the problem. And so I think just like any other community impact, it should be weighted 
and included uh, teams who are doing good should be recognized. Now, um, one one factor that I do see here with the imbalance in first. Now, there, granted, there is a definite imbalance throughout the entire lifetime of first, and there always has been because of uh, different areas that teams are founded in because of their sponsors that they get and all of this and all of that. What's happened here is a large stratification that has happened amongst, even within the ranks of teams. We have teams that are, throughout all tiers, have no access to being able to help the community in first place that could be in the running for Chairman's Award normally, and now are going to be left out of the running now because they have no access to this stuff because their schools are closed. So, and unless you're gonna go out and start breaking orders and start breaking into your school, which I'm sure we would not condone at all as an organization, where you're kind of left in the dust. Yeah. And I think I think that kind of touches on one of, uh, one of the concerns I've heard expressed many times with Chairman's Award is that sometimes people use Chairman's Award as a motivation to do things rather than it being an intrinsic motivation. And it, some people might feel that they're behind on chairmans because everyone else is get, taking opportunities and, and able to uh, work to combat coronavirus and COVID-19, whereas the, an individual might feel like, well, say someone in New York, they might feel like, well, we're under these intense restrictions. We're not able to access anything. I can't go out to my school to, uh, to start using the 3D printer we have. I can't... Um, go deliver things to someone's house because there's that much of a risk and that they might go and, and take additional risks uh, because of, of chairman's award. And, and that's a concern that I've, that I have is that people might, might look at chairman's award as their motivation to be, to be working to stop COVID-19 uh, rather than it being something that's intrinsic. Yep. Where there is the physical aspect of the virus and helping where I don't believe two teams would be so equal as COVID would be kind of put intended the general outreach that doing COVID or helping COVID would put a team up a, up in edge against another. But what teams can do if they're, okay, say New York or somewhere else, that they can help physically, they can hit another aspect and try and lift people's spirits because there's the emotional aspect of this whole virus with a lot of people going from usually being outside, hanging with friends, going out, staying with their teams, bonding, to now stuck at home, can't do much, feel defeated. Lifting people emotionally can really help in showing a sustainable effort that can go past COVID. And I mean, I totally agree with that standpoint as well. However, one major thing that's there is that, yes, we're doing this all with the goodness of our hearts. That like if what it's come down to, we are doing this because we're a bunch of people who, we, all of us inside of FIRST in general, are doing this because we're a bunch of pre-engineers that have nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I mean, in all honesty, we have nothing to do. We are starting yeah. to get bored. Our Most of us have robots that weren't even able to touch wheels on the carpet, on fields. I mean, I we had Orlando here in Florida. We were at the event, and it was closed on us there. Mm. So That's we had hard. nothing better than to go through and do this. And everybody's doing it as well. So... It brings into question, if everybody's doing it, that can do it, then it kind of nullifies the point of it being even included in chairmans in the first place. Right. And 
I, I so I, I have a uh, a comment from the from the chat that I'd like to read out and, and ask a question to all of you to get your yeah. opinion. And uh -huh. uh, from Exalted One, he says he thinks there's always an imbalance between teams that will win chairmans every year and then the teams that are trying to just get to the point where they can win it once. And and also that there's an imbalance that makes it virtually impossible to go and win the local district uh, district champs chairman's award. Um, that that would be a similar level of difficulty to win at a regional due to due to the size comparison. So do you think my question to all of you is do you think that uh, there's a potential for coronavirus or COVID-19 related efforts to increase the imbalance between teams competing for chairman's award? There is a potential. I can see that, but in our local district, uh, my local district of New England, there is a local team that I saw them go two weeks in a row where the last four years they were they won champions both at district championship level and local district. And this year didn't win it at all. Went to two completely other teams. One that won it two years ago and one first time winning it. So there's still always the teams that can rise up if they do it over time and keep that sustainable effort going. Ryan? Uh, yeah. So, I do think there can be more of an imbalance, but a little bit like what Trevor said and what I've been saying, I think the Chairman's Award is all about the fact that there's imbalance and that you're uh, working with what you've got. So, COVID is going to put some teams at a disadvantage that we're at an advantage. You know, perhaps your local amazing chairman's team hasn't been able to demo for months because of COVID. Yeah. Um, likely maybe your local crazy chairman's team has a bunch of 3D printers at home and they have kept chugging at their pace. I think any amount of new imbalances, old imbalances, adding in or out, it all comes down to there are teams that are going to wind up with a net advantage and teams with a net disadvantage, but the Chairman's Award is simply about sitting down with what you've got and trying to make the absolute best impact you can for the sake of making an impact, right? You're not doing it to win the award. So even if you're disadvantaged, you take that and you go. You know, it stinks COVID shut down my build space for three months, mm. but I'm still going to help with COVID because, you know, it's a worldwide pandemic. I'm going to do my best when my team gets back. And I don't think it would be fair for anyone to look at that team and say, you know, that specific thing doesn't count. So another comment from chat that relates directly to that um, is, you know, a lot of, and th this isn't the comment from chat yet, but, you know, a lot of the awards in first are focused on team efforts. Pretty much every award you're, you're supposed to be focusing on what the entire team has done to achieve the goal of that award. Um, even, even to some extent, the um, the Woody Flowers Award and Dean's List, all of those awards, they don't only look at the individual, they also look at, at that individual's impact on the team. So they're very much encompassing the entire team. And what someone said in chat is that they feel weird about efforts, um, about chairman's related efforts chairmen's and, and COVID related efforts, because most of them aren't going to be team wide efforts. They're going to be a small portion of a team, very small, possibly even only a single person from that team working towards a specific goal. But then if you go and include that in chairmen's, you're taking one person's efforts alone and, and kind of attributing that to the team as a whole. Uh, and I, my personal opinion on that is that, I think that's not only a concern with COVID, but also a concern in general with chairmans, um, where I've seen, uh, even as recently as this year, chairmans related content, whether it be packets in the pits or conversation from other people, where an individual's efforts will be included into their chairman's presentation as not even just like a minor aspect, sometimes as a main focus, that individual's efforts um, say one person goes off to go found one alumni goes off to mentor a team or found a team. I've seen that go into someone's main chairman's content as like, this is what our team did. And, and that potentially could be exacerbated by the current situation where people aren't allowed to come together, uh, and collaborate, uh, as much as they would have before. 
I think that there's a potential for those individual efforts to see more of a focus in next year's Chairman's Award, especially if coronavirus um, is seen as a valid topic to include in your Chairman's presentation and Chairman's essays. Yeah, there are the projects that are like, okay, we have like a small group that like are kickstarting it, but I think for every team it comes down to like portraying the information as accurately possible. If you say that due to our members not having this resource, one of our members was able to do X, Y, Z. That's the difference between it kind of feeling not as a team effort and as a team effort, as the rest of the team members could start assisting that member in finding people that need the mask. Right. Finding, finding legal guidelines and helping them with producing it, finding put, finding ways to ship it to the people that need it. So that way you include it as a full team effort. So then a question for you. Um, All right. Do you think that in order to assist in that clarity – or maybe not even assist, but require that clarity. Do you think that first should make a change, at least for the 2021 season, similar to the 2015 chairman's definitions that were added, to focus on clarity regarding individual efforts and how they can be included and how they can be talked about in your chairman's essay, um, like similar to those 2015 definitions that were added? Do you think that's a good idea? That could be a way that they could solve it, or they could put it as part of the 2020 like full documentation form. If they add in a small section on like how many people, like how many people initiated this effort, like who were the main people that led this thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think we have a question from Tyler. I just want to jump in and ask an interesting thing. When we talked about the history of chairmans, we talked about uh-huh. how a couple of years ago that switched from being two years of consideration now to what, five years, right? Yep. Two so to five years. is what a team did for COVID-19 going to be valid in 2024 as part of their chairman's award or should that change and should it only be maybe valid for next year? Yeah. So it by, you, you can take that one. Yeah, by the yeah. own definitions as they stand, it goes from a gap of two to five years. But what FIRST also looks at is sustainable efforts within that period. Can you? I can't see a team that really has many efforts that are sustaining from COVID on five years unless it's an effort that helped COVID, something like kind of... I was saying before on like the emotional side of things, helping teams in that aspect or like what a local what a local team poster around I saw is drawing pictures and coloring them in and sharing them. You can sustainably keep that going for those five years. Yeah, I think I think the sustainability aspect is definitely something that um, a lot of people should consider with coronavirus and chairmans because uh, historically, um, or, or speculating on future history, I, I don't think coronavirus-related efforts like creating PPE or or those type of efforts will be sustainable leading into the future. But certain things like uh, I imagine there are going to be teams that are going to lose sponsors due to the economic impacts of COVID, and teams that create programs to help teams get more sponsors, that could be something they could extend into the future. And that becomes a sustainable program um, that's more applicable to chairmans. So one thing that I wanted to also throw in here, um, like, because we're talking about the sustainability of teams at this point. So one thing that I'm seeing is that everybody's posting about these PPE and the face shields. I'm glad that everybody's doing it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I, I want to see more of it because at this rate, we're going to have a second wave. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And a surplus is what we need at this point. But 
I, also, you have General Motor Company going through and doing stuff to help out the community. You have grandmothers in their homes sitting instead of New York City that are making masks and sewing because they, we all have nothing better to do. The one thing that I want to see that I like this, I believe, is a a charity impact, not a chairman's impact. Mm. A chairman's impact is something like, okay, I'm a team that has all of these resources. And I see everybody else is going through and making these PPE and these face shields. Everybody's worrying about the outside world. What about us here in first? What about looking intrinsically at ourselves as an organization as sustaining? Because I know of teams that have connections outside of the country, that have connections to teams inside of the country. And what are those teams doing? How are they holding out? How are they holding out on a mental scale as well? Because I know that I've been getting driven stir crazy here inside of my own house after not being able to leave for three weeks. Like, right. it's been insane. So I think that what is a chairman's effort is being able to go out and look at the sustainability of our organization itself by going through and looking at your teams that are currently having issues. We just had 337 rookies join this year. How many of them are not going to be able to last until the next season after their season just got plopped down right in front of them just because of this pandemic? What can yeah. we do as an organization to help them? If I can find if we find a team that can go through and help them live on until next year and help this organization move forward, that is a chairman's award winning team using COVID. Otherwise, I see this as more of a charity act. Yep. Yeah. That and is think, the difference. I think some of that comes into when when first says that they're looking at two to five years of history, um, my understanding now is that they want you to focus more on the things that you have been doing sustainably. Something that you just started this year has a lot less impact than something that you did last year or the year before. And for some teams, can finding inventive ways to continue their previously sustainable programs that may have become unsustainable due to this uh, crisis, for, for those teams, they might see a lot more impact from actually sustaining their programs than from trying to create new ones or trying to um, do things like like creating PPE or or providing meals or, or anything like that. Sustaining current programs um, is going to be really crucial for teams looking at chairmans. Yeah, we're on the kind of charity act. Well, yes, I agree with you that doing that next level of impact, that is what is really going to make a team stand out. And that is really like going away from kind of the face mask of just that as a, okay, here's your generic, like open house, generic outreach. Freshman yeah. orientation, generic outreach. There's a teams that do donations of STEM kits to their elementary schools. Those are same kind of in an apart a charity act. Would mm -hmm. those then shouldn't be counted because there's still a donation outward? Not necessarily because when you're thinking about it like this. Now this is more of an extrapolation. What happens when I send a kit, a science kit? out to a school that has my team name and team number on it. That now is an imprint inside of the mind of that kid that is using that kit or that school that is using that kit to know to say, oh, this is that team. Now, I've just created sustainability for myself because now people are gonna remember this. Now, if I do outreaches at those high schools inside of that area around that elementary school or middle school at that point now i have students to come on to my team to help my team make remain sustainable mm. so that is still intrinsically a sustainability factor 
not I wouldn't right. call that a charity factor. Because this going outside with the masks, it's great for the general population and helping our people that are on the front line that need the help the most right now. If you look at um, just under my face on the screen, you'll see that the poll we just had in chat about whether chairman, whether COVID-19 impacts were chairman's or charity, um, everyone that interacted with the poll said that uh, they thought it was charity. And I think that's interesting to see that there, uh, while it might be a small sample size, there's a, a large consensus there that people think it's more of a, a charitable act than something that should be uh, a chair, that, that something that would be considered a chairman's um, type of program. Uh, and then let me just read real quick through a couple, uh, just skim over a couple comments I saw in chat that I think have some have some value for us. And uh, specifically a couple long comments from GenLaw1902. Uh, they said, FRC has an inherent economic disparity, so different regions, different local companies can, can affect uh, teams and, and their ability to access outreach efforts. And that this is being exacerbated by the virus and the first community itself will experience problems due to that. And I think that's really important to consider is what the long-term impact on first is as a whole. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at chairman specifically in this show, but, but the first program in a whole, as a whole is going to see a lot of impacts from coronavirus. Uh, and that, that's definitely something that uh, I, we might want to look at in the future. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and then, again, from Gen Law 1902, they said Chairman's was going to come down to an inventive outreach. We're all working digitally, um, and teams could definitely start working on moving some of their content online or developing more online content and outreach programs, developing their social media. Um, and I think that I think that's definitely something that teams should look at for uh, their their chairman's efforts is is how to adapt to a, a digital sphere and that that will help teams broaden their chairman's efforts and broaden their outreach programs because when something's digital it's available worldwide I mean there it's it's much easier to access a worldwide impact sphere if you have digital content so taking um, taking the social distancing and, and lockdown into account, and using that to build on your global outreach through online programs is definitely going to be uh, very advantageous. And with that, uh, we're going to be looking to close out our uh, debate section of the show. I'm going to hand that over to Brian. Okay. So, yeah, we are... We have come down to... A lot of great points here. It is, I'm glad that I, everybody's been able to go through and be pretty GP, but also be able to make some real good points inside of this uh, debate here. Um, I, we had some great comments in from our, from chat. I'm glad that we were able to go through and have some interaction with you guys. You guys also brought up some great points inside of there as well. Um, what comes down to, like, guys, just keep doing what you're doing. We're not saying don't do this information. Don't do this. Like, no, continue going through. Keep making the PPE. Keep making the face shields. These things are extremely important to the general population at this point. We're not saying don't go stop doing what you're doing. Going through and doing this would be great had a great help to our social impact here at this point. Um, so at this point, um, we have a shout out from Aiden. He has somebody, some teams over in his area that are doing something local. Yeah. So I'm, I'm currently a member on FRC 5113, the combustible lemons. And we're working with uh, some local teams in the South Jersey area to produce PPE, specifically face shields, as well as some reusable masks. And um, I just want to give a shout out to that program. I think there's a lot of programs out there that are great. And if you're looking for a program to support in creating PPE, um, 
this one's this one would be a great one to support as well. Uh, the website is FRC against covid19.com all letters and numbers no dashes um, and the link is in the chat uh, and it's also on the screen right now so if you'd like to su support that or check it out that'd be great and also you should look around and check your local area talk to your local teams and see if any of your local teams have programs like it to support creating PPE especially 3d printable face shields uh, that have been essential in supporting the fight against COVID-19. All right, guys. Well, that's our show. Thank you guys so much for joining us through this pilot episode here for Warp on Fun. And thank you to our producer, the editor-in-chief of Fun, Tyler Olds, for running behind the scenes of the show. Don't forget, Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining the Fun Nation with a subscription or bits here on Twitch or by even or even by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or just by getting people in first to know that this is the place to be to get the information that your teams need um don't forget to check us out on discord youtube facebook instagram twitter and live on twitch and real quick we have something from tyler well, i just want to give a big shout out to uh, red leader 342 coming in and gifting five subs to the community thanks so much red leader uh, and thanks to everybody else. Heck uh, yeah, Red your, Leader. Yeah, man. With your subscriptions and bits, it really does go a long way. So thank you for that. Appreciate it, man. All right. On behalf of myself, Aiden, Trebor, Ryan, and Tyler, we would like to thank you for joining. And thank you all to, to thank you to all the moderators in chat. Talk to you next time we come around with the Warp Show. This video is brought to you in part by PTC. Look, during this time, it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real-world problem with a chance to win a share of over $7,000 for your team. Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.